Yes, Martha brightened. Yesterday, sort of, sort of, he laughed and his eyes flicked down over her body to her feet and back again. I'm Blake Chambers. Martha Stevenson, she stuck her hand out awkwardly and his fingers closed around, closed around it. Nice to meet you. In fact, you're the first person I've met here. Great, then I'll be the official welcoming committee. So where do you live anyway? I don't remember any houses being for sale around town. Well, we're, we're really not in town, Martha brushed, self-consciously at a stray wisp of hair. It's a big old house, sort of out in the country. I don't really know my way around yet, but her voice trailed off as his smile faded, then seemed to recover itself. For one crazy instant, she could almost have sworn he looked frightened. Not the old Bedford place. Martha shook her head. I don't know. I didn't know it had a name. But his smile was back, warm and irresistible. Sure, everyone knows the old Bedford house. I'd say your work's cut out for you. He glanced back at Connor, who was sorting through a shoebox the girl held for him. Your boyfriend? Who, Connor? Martha spun around flustered. No, he's... he's... I know, Blake teased. You're just good friends. Friends, thought Martha ironically. We're not even that. But aloud, she said, our parents just got married. To each other, I mean. God, Martha, could you sound any stupider? Wow, new family, new town? That's really tough. Oh, well, it's okay. Martha gave a shy smile. Do you work here? Not if I can help it. His laugh was easy. My uncle owns the place. When back there, she's my cousin. I'm just helping out today. Martha nodded and tried to think of something to say, but Blake saved her. Look, I've got to get out of here. I'm late already. Nice meeting you. I'll probably see you at school, huh? I hope so, Martha bit her lip. Nothing like begging. She watched him say goodbye to the man at the register as he shot out the door. A moment later, a car squealed out of the parking lot. I bet it's a date he's late for with a beautiful girl. He's not your type, Connor said. Martha jumped, her face flaming. He looked down at her and slowly shook his head. Too late. You're entranced. Mind your own business, Martha sh sh shouldered. Passed him to the car and refused to say another word. All the way home. Not that it mattered, she thought ruefully. Connor didn't say a word to her either, and it seemed to enjoy the quiet. But at least Blake was something new to think about, something to keep her mind off of the miserable predicament. As soon as she could, Martha excused herself from another disastrous dinner and went outside. The rain that had threatened all day now hung in a thick mist, blurring the outlines of the trees, muffling the world in gray. She walked slowly around the house, shivering in the dampness. Through a veiled sky, the moon struggled up through the tangled trees, its feeble light tossed by the wind. The old Bedford place. Frowning, she remembered that stricken look on Blake's face, how he'd mistaken her for someone else. Throwing a look back over her shoulder, Martha tensed at a clammy blast of cold wind. The trees rustled, limbs flailing like scrawny arms. She came to an abrupt halt at the back corner of the house and looked off into the woods. And then she felt her skin crawl. Something back there was moving. With a gasp, she stared hard at the tree line, her mind confused. There was nothing there but darkness, tight packed darkness. And yet somehow, somehow she knew something was back there, unseen, unheard, just watching. There's supposed to be an old cemetery somewhere on the property. As Martha stared wide-eyed at the throbbing darkness, such an awful sigh, Awful terror seized her that she thought she might be sick. And then she heard the sound, the crying. So soft at first that she thought it was the wind whining around the eaves of the old house, sighing through the dead, dead trees, only it was so sad, so pathetic that suddenly Martha's head was full of it, the heartbreaking crying that came from nowhere and wouldn't stop. Who's there, she called. Is someone there? And the mist was so thick that she couldn't see the house anymore or the sky. And the wind was whipping around her, echoing through the trees, louder and louder. Not like crying now, like breathing. It was breathing. Martha went rigid, her heart threatening to explode. It was everywhere now, everywhere behind her and around her. And there just in front of her where something watched, where something waited in the dark. 
Oh, God, Martha whispered. Oh, and she stood there too terrified to move. And the trees shuddered as something shifted deep within their shadows and slipped away. She felt it the second it happened, as the mist curled silently around her. Martha felt the sudden yawning emptiness where something had just been, there before her in the night. And finally, she was able to run.